Now, anyone opposed to the re-election of President Uhuru Kenyatta has only four days left to file a petition at the Supreme Court as the seven-day window following the declaration of Kenyatta and his deputy William Ruto as the winners elapses this Friday. And as our political affairs reporter Murimi Mwangi now tells us, President Kenyatta has exactly 26 days to convene the first sitting of parliament if his election is not challenged in court. Declare Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta as president-elect and Honorable William Ruto as the deputy president-elect. It was the declaration that officially opened the mandatory seven days window during which anyone opposed to the re-election of President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy William Ruto can file a presidential election petition at the Supreme Court, the deadline being Friday this week. If the petition is allowed, then we will have to go for another re-election for the office of the president as the deputy president. If the petition is dismissed, then seven, on the Tuesday next after the seven days, the, the procedure for swearing in of the president and the deputy president has to be followed. In the absence of any petition so far, Article 141, subsection 2 of the 2010 Constitution directs that the president-elect shall be sworn in on the first Tuesday, following the 14th day after the declaration of the presidential election. If all things go as of now and there's no petition uh, submitted to the Supreme Court by the opposition and nobody uh, challenges the presidential elections, the president must be sworn in by the 29th of August. Barring an eventuality on account of uh, an election petition being filed in the Supreme Court, that uh, the, the committee set out under the Assumption to Office of the President Act will uh, constitute uh, an ad hoc uh, arrangement to enable the swearing in. Should any presidential election petition be filed at the Supreme Court before Friday this week, then Article 140, subsection 2 of the Constitution directs that the court shall hear and determine the dispute in 14 days. In the absence of any petition, then Kenyatta has exactly 26 days to convene the first sitting of parliament, whose notice must by law be published in the Kenya official gazette. Okay, but... MP-elect for Garissa Township and the National Assembly Majority Leader in the 11th Parliament, Aden Dwale, says the Jubilee Party legislators-elect could meet this week to begin deliberations on the choice of speakers, deputy speakers, and the holders of other key positions in the two houses. But the Kenyan opposition may have to go back to the drawing board. After the ruling party and its affiliates expanded their numbers in parliament to near absolute majority, with Jubilee Party and its affiliates clinching 194 of the 337 National Assembly seats, compared to the 108 that went to the opposition, with 27 of the 47 senators being voted in on Jubilee and its affiliates compared to the 20 elected on NASA affiliate parties, a state of affairs which observers say could complicate the opposition's watchdog role. If I add the number of uh, independents uh, from our strongholds, and I add the number of nominated members of parliament we are going to get, then we will control two-thirds of the house. Therein lies a the problem. We are likely going to have a situation whereby a, a dominant party will, uh, will, will determine the affairs of the country for the next five years. Now, even as the standoff persists over the outcome of the presidential poll, August 8th goes in history as a momentous day when Kenyans elected independent candidates in numbers, and the next five years are no doubt a defining journey for Kenya. Murimi Wangikitia News in Nairobi.